New York Times best-selling author and illustrator Jared Krasowska, who you might be familiar with for his graphic novel Lunch Lady or his picture books such as Max for President, has a new graphic novel out entitled Hey Kiddo. This story is a personal account of his childhood in which he describes the heartache and difficulty of learning that his mother was addicted to heroin. In the book, he talks about his own anger and how addiction affects families. The author lives in Northampton, and he sat down with Connecting Point's Carolee McGrath to tell us more about the project. Hey Kiddo is a graphic memoir, so it's a story about my life, and it's told through uh, sequential art, so panels and word balloons. Uh, and it's told as much as it is told with the words, it's told with the pictures as well. Okay, it's a serious topic though, and it, and it really deals with family addiction. Tell us a little bit about your story. Sure, so I, I grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts, and my mother uh, my, my uh, mother was addicted to heroin, which I would, would learn later in, in my childhood. And so she only had custody of me for a couple of years until her parents, my grandparents, stepped in. So Joseph and Shirley raised me beginning when I was uh, just before my third birthday, they they took me in and then gained legal custody of me, uh, and and so for for many years I, I would share that story and then people thought well it was must have been easy from then on out because you had these grandparents and we all have these images of, of grandparents as baking cookies and you know uh, and they were wonderful people but they were as as humans are complicated so this so hey kiddo is about growing up grappling with my mother's addiction, dealing with uh, my grandparents. Uh, you know, while they were never in their lives labeled as alcoholics, they certainly drank a lot and they drank their drinks stiffly and uh, to, to, to extremes. And uh, also my, my birth father, I didn't meet until I was 17. So it's about sort of getting a handle on all of that while you're growing up. Uh, and how for me personally, like my, my go-to thing was art. I love drawing, I love comics. So it's about how uh, art can, uh, help you escape your realities. Art can uh, be saving grace. And, and this book is also, it's about family and how family takes many, many forms and many shapes and how family isn't perfect. But uh, and I, I think it's the through line throughout for, for my book is while these people were very complicated, my mother included, of course, I was loved. I was loved very much. And I, and I think that comes through in the book as well. And why was it so important for you to get that message out and to share your story at this time? Well, it's a story that I've been thinking about writing since I first got published. So my first uh, children's books were published uh, in early 2000s. 2001 was my first book. It was published. And um, I've always told stories through words and pictures. And I always thought maybe I would share my story through words and pictures, my upbringing. And it was always sort of in the back of my mind. But then uh, in 2012, I gave what I call an accidental TED Talk. I was home on a on a Friday afternoon, October of 2012, and the person who was producing the TEDx talks at Hampshire College got in touch with me. She called me and she said, our headliner canceled, and would you be able to fill in? Now thinking she meant, was well, this next week, you know, or, or possibly tomorrow, uh, but she was talking about that night. So I had about four or five hours to, to get myself together, get over to Hampshire College, and deliver some sort of presentation. My wife, Gina, encouraged me to talk about my upbringing because, of course, if someone calls you and says, could you give a TED Talk in four hours, you don't, you don't have a TED Talk you know, in, in your top drawer waiting to go. Uh, so she really encouraged me to talk about my upbringing and what I dealt with and how I used art to overcome. And that, that TED Talk ended up uh, going onto the front page of TED.com. It's, it went viral. It's been viewed over a million times. And after that fact, every school I would visit, because I visit schools with my children's books, Every school I'd go to, there'd be an adult who'd pull me aside to say, you know, we, we have kids at the school that are just like you. Either they have a parent who's incarcerated or they have a parent who's dealing with addictions. Uh, and certainly they're dealing with home lives that aren't your sort of fairy tale, Brady Bunch-esque homes. And, and it wouldn't matter where I was. It wouldn't matter what city or state. It wouldn't matter if I was at a school that was 99% free and reduced lunch or a school with, with huge tuition fees, the private schools. This was everywhere. Right. And so there is a switch for me that went from, this is a story that I always thought maybe I'd want to write, to realizing this is a story that I kind of need to write. Because now I have all of these readers who've followed me along over those years with my children's books, who are now in their mid to late teens, if not early 20s. Um, and so I've lived this experience as, as they have. And I have a very unique way in which to tell this story. 
and and so all of that came together for me to realize like okay this this just needs to happen and and it took a while because it also uh, aside from the amount of work that goes into writing and illustrating a graphic novel uh, just gaining the courage to tell the story I realized that if I was to write this I couldn't pull any punches I had to put it all out there for all to see and I, I was wondering you know a lot of people um, who have a, a challenge like you had growing up um, you know sometimes follow what their parents did you did not how were you able to kind of choose a different path than your than your mom well for one thing I, I always loved to draw and she always loved to draw and she was very talented and all the drawings that she drew for me she drew from prison right she didn't she didn't draw them at the kitchen table with me and we would we would draw pictures back and forth and send letters back and forth while she was incarcerated and I realized at a very young age that she had been given this gift and squandered it she wasn't able to do anything with it uh, so there was there was that passion I had but I was also surrounded by so many caring adults I mean you have the I had the adults in my home that cared for me but I was surrounded by so many adults at my schools the teachers that would encourage me or you know I have aunts that are like sisters who would encourage me or you know my neighbor's mom would always encourage my, my gift of, of drawing and so because I, you know as they say it takes a village I had this village of adults who believed in me uh, I was able to transcend that and did you think that you had a different perspective writing it you know in your later, not in your later yeah. years, but as opposed no. to like when you were 22, Absolutely. writing it, you know, so many years later, did you have a different view being married and having children? Well, certainly, you know, time helps us get a better handle on on the scope of things, right? So a couple of things happen. Well, obviously, age helps because you get a, you get a more a macro a view of all of this happening. Um, but I became a parent, right? So when I became a parent, and I, you know, loving on my baby so much. And as, as my kids aged, and I got to be there for everything, I realized how difficult that must have been for my mother to be separated from me. You know, as a kid, it's your world. Everyone's living in your world when you're a child. And you're sort of heroes and villains of your life. And then as, I, as I got older, and I had, and I had my kids, it, it, it definitely gave me more empathy for my mother. Even though, ironically, as I was having kids, my mother started getting in trouble again, started getting arrested again, she started using again. Um, and that also, her, her relapse also helped me realize that she just couldn't help herself. You know, I know her heart and her heart was just pure love and joy, but her, her mind and her body wasn't in sync with that. And so, no, if I had written this in my early 20s when I first started thinking about it, it would have been black and white. Here are the heroes, here are the villains. But because I waited, you know, it's just, it's all shades of gray with, with it's like a sliding scale of complicated for these people in their lives and where they're at. For young kids who are going through something like you went through, um, what do you say to them who are struggling with all these different emotions? Well, for one, you know, I, I always encourage kids to, to realize that there are so many kinds of intelligence and we live in a society in which, you know, we have these state tests and you have to hit these benchmarks, but there are so many ways to be talented and there's so many ways to be intelligent. So I had uh, artistic intelligence. One might have musical intelligence. One might have interpersonal skill intelligence, you know, and so I tell students, you maybe grow up to be a musician, you may grow up to be a guidance counselor, and whatever unique gift that you have, to focus on that, embrace that, celebrate that, and, and that can be your ticket out of whatever you're dealing with.